let us revive a classic swamp creature from Washington. His name is... Take a guess. Drum roll, please. Mr. Elliot Abrams. <laughs> a true... A true neoconservative, right? A true believer of the neoconservative faith. So I thought, now that Biden has nominated him, uh, that we could... Um, you know, we could go through some of his best hits, okay? I, I think that uh, that's important. Just so you know, uh, Biden has, an, has nominated Elliot Abrams to serve as um, United States Advisory Commission on Public Diplomacy, right? But uh, Elliot Abrams, he's had a long career as a swamp creature, okay? So, um, uh, like I said, let's go through his best hits. He's been in, he served in three Republican administrations. He was Assistant uh, Secretary of State in the Reagan administration. Uh, he was uh, Donald Trump's special envoy to Iran and Venezuela. He's basically, his job was basically to coup Maduro and make life hell for people in Iran. And he was also the senior director um, of the National Security Council uh, and uh, then deputy assistant to the president and deputy national Se security advisor under former uh, President George W. Bush, right? One of my favorite neocons through and through. <laughs> so let's take a look at his best hits. What has, what, what is, you know, what has this guy been up to? I think one of the most famous uh, um, uh, scandals that you, you might be familiar with is, um, uh, you know, the, the Contra, uh, the, the Contra uh, Iran, Iran Contra scandal, right? So basically what he was doing is selling weapons to Iran, which was sanctioned at the time and, 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 and illegal, and then using the proceeds of that money, uh, of those sales, to, to, to finance and fund the um, uh, death squads in Nicaragua, the, the Contras which were used to do pretty much what, uh, you know, he was doing in El Salvador and Guatemala and, you know, everywhere else in Latin America. Meaning what? Killing children, killing nuns, killing priests, killing civilians, killing, you know, raping people, everything. Every bad thing that you can think of, that is what Elliot Abrams was, was helping to finance in Latin America and Central America. Okay, so, you know, basically... Um, this is uh, 1981. Uh, sorry, I was going to get to the 1981 massacre in a second. I'm getting his crimes all, you know, mixed up. Uh, no, in 1991, he entered a guilty plea because he lied about this uh, Iran-Contra affair. Okay, so he, I think he got two misdemeanor counts uh, and uh, two years probation and 100 hours community service. And then George, um, uh, uh, George Bush later pardoned him. So, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's a joke. Right, so he, he lied to Congress. He lied to Congress about this. Like, he just, you know, gets up and swears, and, and he just lies to them, and he gets caught. But being a neoconservative and a swamp creature, he kind of just fails upwards. He, you know, people just keep employing him and giving him these, uh, these roles to go screw with other countries because that's what he does best. Um, and, you know, the fact that Biden has nominated him, I was going to rant about this towards the end, but the fact that Biden has nominated him, argh, aren't they just beautiful? Do you see how Trump and Biden, they just like, they hold hands and do the same crap, right? There's no difference between these two. I told you this before, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm telling you again. Uh, no, no difference whatsoever. It's so typical. Of course, of course, Joe Biden was going to nominate Elliot Abrams. What, what do you think? He's different from Donald Trump or George Bush? They're the same crap, these people. They're all neoconservatives. They're swamp creatures. All of them. Donald Trump. Joe, I, I don't care. There's no difference between these people. None especially, especially when it comes to foreign policy, especially. I mean, this is more like uh, wreaking havoc and evil than foreign policy, but you get the idea. So um, basically, you know, what, what, what he would do, uh, Mr. Abrams, he would basically get the Contras uh, weapons and then, you know, masqueraded uh, as humanitarian aid. And um, it's interesting because when Trump uh, employed him, uh, they were saying Maduro is evil because he refuses to uh, allow humanitarian aid to come into Venezuela from the United States. Well, guess why? Because the same guy uh, that you've appointed a special envoy to Iran and Venezuela it, it was, was um, bringing in humanitarian aid, quote-unquote, and it was just weapons. So yeah, obviously anyone with half a brain is not going to accept any form of aid that you claim is aid, uh, period. Especially when that guy's in charge. Like... It, how can you attack Maduro for this? <laughs> Have some shame. Have some shame, man.
So in, uh, here's another one of his greatest hits. In 1982, he's giving the Senate testimony, you know, and he, he, um, uh, he tries to kind of downplay this uh, massacre that's taken place in El, um, in El Mazot, right? So this is in, in, um, uh, in El Salvador, and it's like, to this date, it's probably the biggest massacre, uh, uh, um, you know, in, in Latin America to this date. And, and when I say that, I mean like, um, you know... Um, in, in, in one fell swoop, I think they killed a thousand people. And these are, again, U.S. trained and U.S. equipped death squads um, in, uh, operating in El Salvador. And they did this in December 1981. This came out in the Washington Post and the New York Times um, just a month later. Something, you know, and he was set to testify about the progress that he was making with these countries, right? Like, his, his, his excuse was that, well, yeah, we know they're brutal, but I'm helping them make progress on human rights, and uh, it's not true, this massacre is not true, it's not possible, because uh, uh, there aren't even a thousand people who live in this area, um, and, and uh, uh, it, it was actually multiple areas, um, uh, you know, he was playing with words, being a, the lawyer that he is, he's playing with words, and be, trying to be clever. And, and trying to downplay what happened. It's a massacre. I mean, like, I, I can't even read to you what happened because it's so brutal. Uh, uh, you, you go look it up. El Mozot. So it's E-L-M-O-Z-M-O-T-E. Uh, sorry, M-O-Z-O-T-E. El Mozot. The El Mozot massacre. You know, uh, like I said, he, he goes in front of Congress and lies about it and then says that the media are trying to, like, make him look bad or something. It's ridiculous. He knows exactly what happened. And actually, I want to play you this clip here. This is um, Ilhan Omar confronting uh, abrams when donald trump was uh, he had nominated him so this is 2019 and i expect he will go through a similar uh you know confirmation um soon where they'll grill him again maybe i don't know you know it, it is the swamp but to take a look listen what happened i fail to understand uh why members of this committee or the american people should find any testimony that you give uh, today to be truthful. If I can respond to that. Uh, um, it wasn't a question. Uh, I, it On was February, that was it not, was that was attack, not a question. I that was, the, I, I reserve the right I'm to sorry. my time. It is not, it is not right. That was Members not a question. Can attack On February 8th. Who is not permitted to reply. That, that was not a question. Thank you for your participation. On February 8th, 1982, you testified before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee about U.S. policy in El Salvador. In that hearing, you dismissed as communist propaganda report about the massacre of El Mosote, in which more than 800 civilians, including children as young as two years old, were brutally murdered by U.S. trained troops. During that massacre, some of those troops bragged about raping a 12-year-old girl before they killed them. Girls before they killed them. You later said that the U.S. policy in El Salvador was a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you still think so? From the day that President Duarte was elected in a free election, to this day, El Salvador has been a democracy. That's a fabulous achievement. Yes or no, do you think that massacre was a fabulous achievement that happened under our watch? That is a ridiculous question. and I Yes would not or no? No. I, I will sorry, take, Mr. I will take that as a yes. I am not going to respond to that kind of personal attack, which is not a question. So that, that, that's the exact same uh, incident, or, um, both the testimony um, and the, uh, the massacre itself that I was referring to, right? So, uh, I mean, you, you heard the details. It's, it's absolutely uh, uh, sickening, you know. And, and uh, as, a, as a side note about Ilhan Omar herself, um, I mean, I, 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 I suppose if you look at the uh, so-called the squad, right, um, out, out of the four, she is the the <laughs> the lesser evil quote unquote i don't appreciate um you know like uh some of the attacks that she gets because i think they're 
just nonsense, you know, people like hating her because she's black or because she's Muslim. My issue with her is that she is two-faced. Uh, she says that she supports Palestinians and then she votes to give Israel 3.8 billion and thinks nobody noticed. Oh no, I noticed. <laughs> and I'm not forgetting that ever, ever. I mean, just any, any, any person, anyone, it's shameful for them to vote to give Israel that money. Um, but her especially pretending, oh, I care about Palestinians and, and coming from a, an African Arab country and being a Muslim, how, Jesus Christ. I mean, if you told people what you'd done, man, they'll spit on you. Like that's, that's shameful. How the hell do you give them $3 billion? Are you out of your goddamn mind? And then of course there's all the other stuff, you know, like they, the $15 minimum wage. I'm not going to go through this again. I'm done with these people. You know, this like B Bernie Sanders crowd is I'm done with them. I don't have time for this. They're, they're bullshitters. That's what they are. Uh, maybe they, they have good intentions. I really don't care. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a failed strategy, and, and uh, there's a lot of two-faced stuff. Anyway, let's, go back, let's focus on Abrams. <laughs> I only, <laughs> she, gave him, she gave him a good dress down. She did. She, I appreciate what she did. That was good. See, I, I credit where credit is due. This is good. Uh, but, uh, you know, when she, she does things like uh, uh, refusing uh, to acknowledge the Armenian genocide, that's shameful, and I will say it. Um, so... Going back to Abrams, there, another thing that he did in El Salvador, there's a, an archbishop, I think his name is Oscar Romero, yeah. Uh, he was assassinated in 1980, and um, uh, that was, uh, I think, uh, Major Roberto Dobuisson, okay? So he's basically a liaison, a U.S. liaison in the country. And he orders this assassination of uh, Archbishop uh, Romero. And, uh, you know, and then Abrams, the same guy, He's like laughing about this kind of and saying like, well, you, you, there's no proof that, that, you know, this happened. There are no cables about this. And then actually like, the, you know, cables, basically dip, um, uh, diplomatic uh, uh, messages. Um, sure, surely enough, they turn up and yeah, there's proof that uh, they knew about this. He, Abrams knew about this and, you know, he's sanctioning and micromanaging all of this behavior. The death squads in Nicaragua, death squads in El Salvador, in Guatemala, you know, a coup here, a coup there, an assassination uh, uh, today, you know, assassination tomorrow. That's his job. That's, that's what this man does. And he, he literally looks like a goddamn vampire. I mean, look at this guy. He looks like a goddamn vampire. I mean, if it wasn't bad enough that he's a neocon, I, I, I really don't care about someone's physical appearance, but he just he fits the role so well, you know? You want to talk about villains? Look no further. You know, this guy makes, uh, uh, they, they like to whine about Putin. This guy ma makes Putin look like a choir boy. Yeah, really, he does. Um, that's what most neoconservatives, you know, they have that effect. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, you want to talk about a war criminal. How, how come he doesn't get summoned in front of the ICC? How come there's no aw arrest warrant for his behavior? So um, uh, let's talk about Uruguay. Right? So again, these are all Latin American countries, right? I haven't even gotten to Iran yet, but um, I know it's uh, uh, um, a lot to keep track of. So basically, in, in, in Uruguay, you have uh, Ferre uh, Ferreira, Wilson Ferreira, who's, who's a very uh, well-known politician, very popular, um, and, you know, anti-government. And then um, he gets imprisoned. He gets thrown in prison by the, by the junta or the military government. And you know, Abrams and the Reagan administration just like say nothing about it, you know, and even the New York Times are, are, uh, um, are, are stunned. And actually there's a good article just, uh, um, hold on this one in Jacobin going through a lot of these things, right? A lot of these, it, it, it goes into much more detail. That's him. That's a younger version of the vampire, but, um, that, that's going to be my nickname for him. The vampire. He, he looks like a goddamn vampire. Um, so in any case, um, you know, his attitude is like, well, if we can make this a democracy, then whatever the cost, it, it, it's worth it. But the thing is, I mean, how, how is it a democracy when you're like literally cooing the elected government that was elected already by the people and then putting one that favors the United States? He doesn't care about democracy. He cares about, uh, uh, you know, Western hegemony, U.S. hegemony, especially in the Western Hemisphere. He cares about Monroe Doctrine. You know, Monroe Doctrine is, is, is um, it implies that because Latin America and Central America are, are the backyard, the backyard of the United States. What a worldview. Um, that, that the United States actions in, in, you know, quelling and taming and pussy whipping anybody in that Western hemisphere uh, is justified because, you know, it's, it's for the United States' own security. If, remember that because when, when you know, Iran uh, doesn't want another um, 
you know, situation like Iraq happening in Syria and then sends help to Syria. Uh, then they start whining in, in the mainstream media. Oh my God, Iran, Shiite, like Shiite uh, support because Assad is an Alawite and they try to like make up some conspiracy that it's like a Shia takeover or something. Is it not, you know, they, no, it's, it's nothing to do with that. Iran also cares about its backyard and, uh, you know, uh, they certainly don't behave like Mr. Elliot, uh, Elliot Abrams, you know, to put it mildly. Um, this guy's, I mean, it's not even, it's not even a, a fair comparison, you know, uh, there's not, it, there's there's nothing to compare but you you understand my point here about the monroe doctrine uh and he's a firm believer in this he's a neoconservative you know through and through um and the world view that he has is just like george bush it's like colin powell it's like condoleezza rice it's you know uh, uh dick cheney it's uh, uh the other bush the the father uh reagan you know it said like america is a force for good and even if america has to nuke the fucking planet america has the right to do so because america represents good what the hell does that even mean? Uh, I mean, at this point, you, you just look at the history since 1945. The amount of evil that has been done by people like Mr. Abrams, it, it's so much it outweighs any potential good intentions that they initially had. And that's if you even believe that they have good intentions, which they don't. They don't have. The, the, what, whatsoever. They, these guys are imperialists. Okay, that's, that's it. Period. Uh, it's, you don't have to complicate things. These guys are just, they're power hungry and they're imperialists. And they, they are taking advantage of the uh, uh, military, uh, the hard power that they have, the soft power to dominate everybody. You know, it's not enough. They're separated by two oceans and completely secure. No, no, no. Let's go screw with everybody. In 2002, they tried to coup Chavez. So, you know, in, in Venezuela. And of course, Mr. Abrams over here, he, you know, he, he um, okayed this. And then... Um, if we look at uh, Palestine, right? Because up until now, I've only been talking about Latin America. But he's definitely been active in the Middle East. In Palestine, you have to understand something that in 2006, you had elections in Gaza. Remember, I was showing you the map that, that the brilliant Israeli plan and European plan is to like carve up Palestine into mini chunks uh, so that it's not even, you know, calling it a country is, is, is not even viable anymore. And Gaza is, you know, a chunk that's on the Mediterranean, right? And so it's, it's besieged now and, uh, uh, and since 2006. And basically, they were so shocked that Hamas won the 2006 elections and, and uh, Fatah, which is the, uh, the Palestinian Authority, uh, Mohammed Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas, you know, in, in, the, in the West Bank, they lost. They lost. The PA, you see, um, and... and they're easier to control, right? Uh, you, can, you can look at them as, as, a, as a kind of outsourcing of the occupation. And, and just to give you an example, today, um, when you know, people were holding funerals after what the Israelis did in Janin, there are people from the PA who showed up from the Palestinian Authority. And they, are, they were just like kicked out. People kick them out because they, they don't do anything to stand up to Israel. On the contrary, they actually help the Israelis to, um, you know, keep the, the Palestinians in line. And so no one respects them. But in, in any case, going back to, to, to the thing here, basically, um, Abrams was doing Middle East policy for Bush. And he, because he could not accept the fact that Hamas won the elections fair and square, he tried to cause a civil war or... Uh, you know, fan the flames of 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 strife and 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 uh, and war between Hamas and Fatah. Okay, and um, you know, and then when when that didn't work out, uh, because they were torturing people, and you know, it it, it was it was really outrageous. But um, in the end, his his opinion is that well, it was a coup. There's there's no coup. Hillary Clinton, by the way, she also thought that if you have elections in, 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 in Gaza, that's a way to cement Fatah uh, rulership and then, uh, by extension, Israeli um, control, right? Because it's tame. It's not out of control like Hamas. Hamas are like, screw you. You're getting out of our country, whether you like it or not. Whether we all die together, you're getting out of our country. Uh, uh, that, that's Hamas. And uh, obviously, Hillary Clinton... Uh, Mr. Abrams over here, they, they're all neocons, so they cannot accept the idea of Hamas because they're also Zionists, right? They want to support Israel. And so she thought she's being clever. He thought he's being clever. Turns out, no, you're, you, are not, you are not as smart as you think you are. And Hamas is now today stronger than ever before. 
uh, uh compare compare with 20 years ago um or with 2006 right like leagues leagues um uh, ahead and this is not just hamas it's the entire resistance so that, that that's important to to underscore um the iraq war obviously mr abrams over here supported that too uh <laughs> Both, both of them, in case that wasn't clear, both Iraq wars, Gulf one, two, and then um, you know, there's another story about a, a journalist that he didn't like. He accused her of being like some kind of liaison for M nineteen, M nineteen, which they were fighting in Colombia, and uh, he he put her in danger, like he put her life in danger just for questioning him. Um, and then of course, when he's working for Trump, you know, we have to remember there was another coup in Venezuela or attempted coup, the Silver Corps. So you remember, basically, they contracted a bunch of morons who failed so miserably that it's nicknamed the Pig of Bailet, <laughs> the Pig of Bailet, the Bay of Piglets. Who cares, right? Because uh, it, it's it's not even the Bay of Pigs, which was also a miserable failure. It's even ten times worse. So it's Bay of Piglets, right? It's even it's a tiny fart. And so I'm I'm sure he had something to do with this. I mean, we know we know that Mike Pompeo, this guy, of course, you know this this was a company. American company, American citizens, U.S. citizens, uh, with connections to Trump, and and they went in and tr they went in and thought they're smart and they can get rid of Maduro. Uh, no, now they're in prison and uh, they were caught. Um, and uh, you know, no wonder Biden wants him. No wonder he is like a dream. This guy is a dream for Biden, for any person in Washington. He is a dream because he believes in. Uh, you know, um, American hegemony. He believes in the Monroe Doctrine. He believes in neoconservatism. He's everything that you want in a mass murderer and a war criminal. He is your man, Mr. Elliot Abrams. <laughs> How unsurprising and underwhelming that Joe Biden, oh, the lesser of two evils. Really? That's not what I would call him. I have other colorful, uh, more colorful terms. Um, I told you, I warned you about this. I told you that he's not going to be any different than Trump. He's going to keep the same sanctions on Syria, on Iran, on Venezuela, on Cuba, on on China. He is going to be just as much as as uh, um, a hawk. Um, and uh, of course, you know, like uh, um, like Trump, he he uh, he continues he continues uh, to support the Saudis. Well, now that's changing slowly. You, you saw they made peace with Yemen, so it's a different reality. But up until then, I mean, he had no... It's, it, Yemen and Saudi Arabia didn't make peace because of Biden. They made peace in spite of Biden and Trump and, and Obama. Uh, but, you know, all, all of this foreign policy, the embassy moving it to Jerusalem, you know, violating the UN Security Council resolutions 242 and on and on. Uh, same behavior as Trump, you know, uh, if not worse. Just as bad, if not worse. And I'm... I mean, I... You know, it's almost a non-story that he nominates this guy all almost almost i couldn't you know um i couldn't um forego the opportunity to recall his greatest hits so there you are elliot abrams your vampire 